Hey friends, it's Rabbi Jenny Solomon here at Beth Meyer Synagogue uh, with a Mincha moment on this week, Parshat Titzaveh, this Torah portion, um, as we continue our way through the book of Exodus. Um, if last week's Torah portion, Truma, was really for all the aspiring architects and interior designers, um, because so much of the Torah portion deals with the construction and the outfitting of the Mishkan, this portable sanctuary with, which traveled through the wilderness with the Israelites. This week's Torah portion, Tetzaveh, is really for all the budding uh, fashionistas and um, clothing uh, experts. So uh, much of this week's Torah portion actually has to do with how the priests dressed and um, what their ceremonial and ritual clothing looked like and uh, symbolized. But additionally, there are details um, which are offered in this week's Torah portion about the ritual sacrifices themselves. And there's one particular verse, um, uh, which is one of my favorite verses to teach. And it's maybe a bit surprising. So in this week's Torah portion, there is one particular verse that says that a yearling lamb should be offered every morning and every evening. This is somewhat um, basic and of course, sacrificial line. It's not something that Jews practice anymore anyway. So in some ways it's totally antiquated and not at all a part of our um, spiritual practice as we practice Judaism today. Um, but the rabbis thought differently. And in the introduction to the Ein Yaakov, which is a collection of Midrashim attributed to um, uh, Yaakov ibn Chaviv, or Chabib, uh, who was from Spain, Salonica, Spain, uh, and Spain, and then made his way eventually to um, Greece uh, around the 16th century. Um, in the introduction to this work, which really is a collection of Agadah, of Midrashim, of stories, he, um, he shares a story uh, attributed to several rabbis from much, much earlier who are having an in-depth conversation about what is the most important verse in the entire Torah. And um, the first rabbi, um, Ben Zoma, says that it is the verse of Shema, the verse in which we affirm uh, the oneness of all being, sort of the affirmation of the central um, statement of a faith in one God that we chant as Jews morning and night. Makes perfect sense. Um, ben Nanas, different rabbi, claims that the verse, Ve'hafzal recha kamocha, uh, love your neighbor as yourself, is actually the most important verse in the Torah. Again, makes sense. Um, love, loving your neighbor, loving yourself. Um, these are foundational concepts which have not only impacted um, Judaism, but even Western civilization, we could say. But another rabbi is quoted, and that rabbi's name is Shimon ben Pazi. And Shimon ben Pazi said that the verse from this week's Torah portion, that you should, you should sacrifice a yearling lamb in the morning, every morning and every night is actually the most important verse. Now, you might be asking yourself why. This is fairly puzzling. How does that line about offering regular sacrifices stand up against the affirmation of the oneness of all being and the, the mitzvah, the commandment to love um, each other as we love ourselves? Well, here's what I think it might mean and why it was so important to Shimon ben Pazi. Uh, and that is that the, the habits that we practice really become the character traits that we embody. And the character traits that we cultivate and embody become the people that we are. So of course the Shema is important. And of course, loving ourselves and loving our neighbors is important. But actually both of those verses stand upon or sit upon the foundation of a spiritual life that is disciplined, that has built in regular reminders 
um, to center, to make offerings, to be in connection with the divine, to give of ourselves generously, and to orient ourselves um, towards some divine purpose. And not just in an abstract or esoteric or theoretical way, but in fact, a very practical, regular, habitual way. That when we have those practices built in to our routine, to our lives day in and day out, morning and evening, those are actually the practices that help us become the people that we are. The idea that we can just sort of commune with the divine, that we can live lives of meaningful spirituality, um, that doesn't just happen out of thin air. Yes, our feelings are a part of that, but we need practices that are in place on a regular basis that help create a container for that connection. And that's a little bit why I wonder if Shimon Ben Pazi had it right. So perhaps you're the kind of person who has lots of practices built in. Maybe you're the kind of person who has those practices but has sort of fallen out of practice. So this is an invitation to step back into practice. And maybe you're the kind of person who's curious about putting those practices into place for yourself for all the meaningful reasons um, that our people has been putting those practices into place for thousands of years. Whatever the case may be, um, I'm with you. I'm here to support you. Um, and I join you uh, in just being reminded that uh, my commitment to those practices, morning and evening, matter. And they create precisely the space for that quality of connection um, day in and day out. All right, everyone. Peace. Shalom.